much with any weight yarn or any size hook that coordinates with that yarn. To begin our flowers, we simply need to start off by creating a slip knot. And then we want to chain four. So just know that this loop on our hook never counts as a chain. We'll go ahead and just wrap the yarn, pull through. That's one, two, three, and four. Now for this particular pattern, we want to make sure that we're making our chains a little bit loose because we're going to form a ring with these chains and we're going to be working a lot of stitches in the center of the ring. So we want to make sure that we have a loose enough foundation to do so. So at this point we want to find the first chain that we created, insert our hook, and slip stitch so that we form a ring. So pull that through the first chain, through the loop on your hook. Now I find it easiest to kind of pull that ring open and so I want to slide my finger just into the center of the ring so I know where I need to work. And we're going to chain one. Now this chain one is going to count as a single crochet. So in the rules of crochet, the single crochet is the height that's equivalent to one chain. Now for the remainder of this pattern, we're going to be working in treble crochets and single crochets. And so we're going to start off with the treble crochet. And this is a US treble crochet. Go ahead and wrap the yarn around your hook two times. Insert your hook into the middle of that ring. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And you'll have four loops there on your hook. So we'll yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through the final two on your hook. So that's one treble crochet. We need to do three more. to make a single crochet into the center of the ring. And what that's going to do is going to pull our petal down so it's actually going to match the other side. So I told you that chain one counted as a single crochet. So we have a single crochet on one end, then we have these really tall stitches kind of fanning out, and then we kind of pull everything together by making that single crochet into the center of the ring. And so what we've done here is create one petal and this particular flower has five petals. So we're just gonna repeat everything now. So we've got our single crochet. We want to make four treble crochets into the center. And from this point, we just need to repeat this entire sequence for three more petals. We've got two, we just want to keep moving until we have five petals. Now I will mention, and you've probably noticed me doing this, as you create your stitches, you're going to have to pull them to the side. And so since we're actually making the stitch around the chain rather than working into the chains, we're able to just slide them down quite easily. So we're just going to scrunch them up in order to make sure that all of these fit. So once you get to your final petal, you'll notice that we're running out of room. It's going to be a really tight fit, but I promise you it will work.
Okay, and so once you get your final petal, so you've got your four treble crochets, and we're ready then to just join and bind off. And what you want to find is that chain one from the very beginning. So it's it's pretty difficult to see, but if you know what you're looking for, then then you should find it pretty easily. So if you find your first treble crochet stitch, you can kind of see that there's this extra little piece of yarn here. That's the chain one that we made at the very beginning of this pattern. So we just want to insert our hook into that chain and we're going to slip stitch. So grab that yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through the loop on your hook. And then we can simply trim a tail. And I like to pull the tail through the loop that's on my hook. And so we'll just pull that down. And so we have to have the ring in the center pretty tight. That way it forms the proper shape. So see how the, the single crochets kind of pull each of the petals in on the side. So if you were to make this ring a little bit bigger so it's easier to work into, then you kind of lose some of that shape a little bit. So at this point I'll just briefly go through how to weave in your ends in case you're brand new. So I like to work over this tail in the center. So as I'm making my stitches, I'm, I'm basically just stitching right over top of it. Uh, but you don't actually have to do that. And if not, you just go ahead and weave this into the stitches just under the side. And now if you're going to embellish something with this little applique, then you may want to leave the tails on and you can use them to sew it to your work. And then the tail from where we bind it off, I like to really pull that towards the back and that's going to help the shape here on the front. So just keep that in mind when you're weaving in this tail. And again, I just like to work it under these stitches here around the center. 